What's up guys, it's Lightsprawl here and today I'm bringing you a video where I'm going to be comparing the three liches that people like to use in Necro um, and it's the water, the wind, and the dark. Now the first I'll explain why people really only like these three and not the fire and the light ones and so as you guys probably know they all have every monster has the same first skill. Okay, I, I can rephrase that. Every like type of monster, so like this, liches, every lich has the same first skill. Every nine-tailed fox has the same first skill. Every whatever, every um, rakshasa has the same first skill. But uh, the second skills and third skills typically differ. Now, typically, the second skills, there will be like two variations. So it'll normally be like some of the elements have one second skill and the other ones have a different one. And then... Like, for example, um, in this, water, wind, and dark have deadly touch, fire, and light have sinkhole. Um, let's go over to the jokers. Some of them have surprise box, as you can see. The f water, wind, and light have surprise box. And then dark and fire have surprise bomb. So that's what it typically is. Um, they all have the same first skill, and then there's only two different second skills. And then the third skills is where it normally is different, where like each one has their own unique third skill. So um, in this case, the reason why wind, water, and dark are the popular ones is directly has to do with the second skill. So the wind, water, and dark all have this deadly touch, which is very good, and I'll explain why it's so good in a second. But I'll explain why people don't like the sinkhole. Um... The sinkhole just, uh, okay, well, I'll explain why people like the liches first, I guess. So, yeah, all the liches also have a passive third skill, just so you guys know. But the reason water, wind, and light are good, or sorry, water, wind, dark are good, is they all have the same first skill, which is very, very good for Necro. It's a two to three hit, each with a chance to speed debuff, um, so it's perfect for Necro. Basically, what you want in a necro skill is first skill speed debuff with multi hits. So um, these guys have it perfect. They've got two or three hits. It's just RNG whether it's going to be two or three, and each has a forty percent chance to land a speed debuff. When they're max skilled, they get sixty five percent though. So if it lands, if you get three attacks and each with a sixty five percent chance to speed debuff, you'll more than likely land that speed debuff. Um, so. That they all have the same first skill. Now the second skill, uh, the deadly touch second skill, which is water, wind, and dark, attacks randomly four times. Um, but so on the necro boss, there's only one target, so it'll attack the boss four times, and each has a 35% chance to do a defense break, as well as if you attack an enemy that's speed debuffed, you will stun them. Um, the water one freezes, but the other two do stun. Um, I don't think there's really a difference though, as far as I know, and so. Of course, the bosses can't be frozen and stunned, but the trash monsters in the first four waves can be. So that's the second skill, which is great because when you think about Necro, all what you really want to have a good Necro team is multi-hits, speed debuffs, defense breaks. So right away, you know that the water, the wind, and the dark have the three things that you want in Necro, as well as their damage dealers, which is just better for making your runs faster. Now, when you go over to the water and the light, sorry, the fire and the light, you'll see that this one just does an AoE attack that I don't even know what it does. I just know it attacks one time and it's AoE. Um, recovers yourself by 50% of the inflicted damage and absorbs attack bar. Uh, you can't absorb attack bar against the necro boss. So the absorb attack bar is nothing. So basically this is a, it'll attack the boss one time and it'll absorb 50% of the damage. Um, so yeah, it's useless in Necro, basically. Now, so that gets the light and the fire out of the way as inferior to light or to water, wind, and dark. So now the question is, should I use water, wind, or dark? Now, this is probably what you guys have been waiting for me to get for, and it took me four and a half minutes to do this. But the reason I wanted to make this video is because I just a day or two ago was debating on which lich i want to build and so my first react or my first instinct nowadays is to go on the internet and look up which lich to do because there's so many people that have already done what i'm trying to do and know which one's the better lich 
And I looked it up on YouTube and I didn't really find any videos on which was the best one. I saw a lot of videos of teams that had a lich in them or even some of them had two liches in them. But no one's really explaining which lich you should, like which lich is the best lich or you know, which bit lich should you use if you're in this situation or this situation. But so after a long time of like pondering this, I think I've just, I realized which lich you should pick. So the only difference between water, wind, and dark is some minor differences in base stats, as you can see here, but and the passives is basically it. Um, they all have different leader skills, but they're only arena leader skills, so you don't need any of them anyways. Um, so basically, Rigel has the most attack and the least HP. This Grego has the most HP and the least attack. And then the Fuko has like the middle of both. So... Um, in terms of that, like, by that logic, the Regal and the Fuku have the best attack power, so you might want to use them. But they're all decently similar. Um, I do realize Grego is actually not that, does not have that much attack power at 6 star. Um, but it's still enough attack power to do damage. So, the, I don't think the base stat's what you should really be concerned about. And then, so, when you get that out of the way, all that's left is the passives. So... The Regale passive is basically he can't be sleep, stunned, or frozen, and he has a 25% chance to be anti-crit. Uh, this is kind of nice because in the crystals in the Necro stage on the stage 1, 2, and 4 do stun, so you get immunity to stun on that, which is kind of nice. This skill, um, the wind one, he gets a shield every time he attacks, and he has every time he attacks he gets a shield proportionate to his level. And when he's level 40, I don't know exactly how much the shield does, but the shield is pretty st strong, I'd say. Um, as well as enemies that attack him get a one-turn speed debuff. So the um, Necro boss, when he attacks you, he gets his shield back, which means he can't be debuffed. So the speed debuff doesn't work on the boss, but it does work in the first stages. Um, and then Grego has this passive that makes it so he the damage dealt to him is halved, but also his heals are halved. So it kind of like like makes it. I don't what's the what's the word. It's like it, they cancel out because he does he gets less damage done to him, but the heals are halved, so it doesn't really do much at all actually. Um, and then he also gets stacks whenever someone dies on the battlefield or what, you know, whatever on the screen if someone dies he gets stacks which makes his attack power go up by 50 percent but so that means on the boss stage um when your teammate goes over gets taken by the boss he gets one stack when you kill your teammate back he gets another stack when you kill the boss the first time he gets a third stack so he gets bonus 150 attack power on the boss's second life and so he'll do a lot of damage so the passives are all a little different, but at the end of the day, none of the passives are that good in Necro. Um, you don't need anti-stun against the boss, you don't need to speed debuff the boss, or you don't really need the shield even, and you don't really need the damage mitigation against the boss, because the boss doesn't do that much damage. So, what it really comes down to for which lich you need, um, it's not that big of a deal which lich you get, because like I said, like, like if you've caught the gist, they're all very similar, like very similar. Um, but what does make the difference here is the elements of them. Now, if you have, let's say the Dark Lich, he's element neutral. So no matter what, um, you don't really want the Dark Lich to get taken to the other side because his passive is actually really bad for if he gets taken over to the other side because, um, oh, sorry, my thing crashed. Let me load that back up, but I can still explain it. Um, the Dark Lich is not good to get taken by the boss because of the fact that if he gets taken by the boss and the damage is halved, it's going to take like twice as long to kill the Dark Lich as it would to kill one of the other two Liches. So if you only are going to make one Lich, I don't recommend the Dark one. Um, if you're going to make two Liches, you can make the Dark one, but don't make him your strongest damage dealer. Make your other Lich the strongest damage dealer. So that's that. Like If you just make one Lich, don't make it the Dark one. Um, now for, and I know that from experience, I have a dark lich six starred right here. Um, I, he was the first lich I made. You can't make a necro team with just the dark lich. Um, it doesn't work. So let me go back to the liches. 
So now it's basically wind or water. Now it's just dependent on what element your team is. If you have a full fire team, pick the wind lich because your whole when your wind lich will be your strongest damage dealer. He'll get taken by the boss. Your whole team is fire, so you'll kill the wind lich quickly, and he'll glance on your team, so he won't kill your whole team when he gets taken over. And if you have a water or a wind team, pick the water lich um, for the same reason. So. Yeah, you don't want the Lich that goes over to the other side to have element advantage over your team. So if you have a full fire team, like, you know, with like Hua and Colleen and Lisa, Adrian, Shiwa, Fire Panda, like whatever other fire monsters you guys are using, you don't want Regale because he'll get taken over to the other side and he might kill one of your teammates and your teammates might not kill him very quick either. So um, that's basically the gist of it is base it on what element your team is i know it took me 11 minutes for you guys to hear that so i'm sorry if you had to watch 11 minutes just to hear that but i wanted to explain why these guys are popular and explain my thought process behind everything first but so that's kind of what i've got to say about the liches now in terms of running double liches um it doesn't matter at all which two you pick um you can pick water wind wind dark water dark because no matter what you are going to make like you, all that matters is if you have the dark one just don't make the dark your strongest damage dealer and if you do the wind and water together make it so the water one is the stronger one so your wind one will like so the water one goes to the boss's side and your wind one kills it afterwards so that's basically it for the lich talk if this was helpful or in any way be sure to, you can mention in the comments if you want i guess um, if there's any other questions, comments, or concerns, though, feel free to leave that in the comments, as well as any other videos you'd like to see, mention that in the comments. But that's really all I have for today, though, guys. So may the best year of today's be the worst year of tomorrow's.